Hello everyone and welcome back to my top 500 games. We are currently at number 296 and I don't know how you meant to pronounce this but I will say it how I pronounce it and that is Eastwatch City Under Siege. Is that how you pronounce it? I, I presume it's not E-S-W-A-T because that just sounds strange but Okay, whatever. This is a Mega Drive game that, once again, I did not play on the Mega Drive. It was the Ultimate Mega Drive collection as to how I played this game originally. It's sort of like one of those shooting platformy style games where you go through the, the levels with not too much in the way of platforms, really. It's more so to do with being able to aim your shots and be able to duck so that you can dodge bullets and get out of the way and it's pretty nice. I don't really have too much to say about this game because my experience is limited but I am basing this off my experience that I did play when I was on the Mega Drive collection. So yeah, this was a fun game to play. Number 295 is another game that I haven't played too much but I'm basing this off what I have played and that is WRC3 FIA World Rally Championship. This is a racing game basically but from what I played there wasn't really as much racing in it in terms of racing against other cars. It was more about beating the timer and there is sort of like this audio that plays when you play this game which is kind of like instructions saying that there's this type of corner coming up at this. A bit like when I was talking about the rally and I was saying that you have moments where it says easy left, hard right, apart from this voice is actually speaking to you and saying like oh there's a so and so degree turn at so and so feet. So it kind of feels like it was more of a training thing more than anything else which is which is unusual I suppose but I did, I did enjoy the amount that I did play and I got this game from PS Plus, I don't remember if I mentioned that, and if I did I've just mentioned it again. Going through these games a little bit faster than what I have been in the last couple of parts, but that's okay, it's just that I don't have as much experience with these games, and the same is true for the next game on the list. Number 294 is Skate 3. Skate 3 is actually a game that my brother got by complete accident because he went somewhere to buy Skate and it was in a second hand shop so it was very cheap and Skate was a pretty old game at this point so he went and bought it and he ended up being given Skate 3 by mistake but he was happy that he got Skate 3 just because Skate 3 was a more expensive game. Kind of like how one time when I got my uh, my Xbox 360 one of the games I bought was Fable 2 and they accidentally gave me the anniversary edition thing but whatever. Skate 3 is one of those skateboarding games that sort of marketed itself off the idea of realistic physics and stuff and when it comes to things like skateboarding and all that I've got to say I like the realism aspect. I like the realism when it comes to racing games as well. Not because I'm one of those people who's like ooh check out the detail on this on this bonnet. No not at all. I just find them more interesting I suppose I, I don't know really but yeah the realism aspect of this game did make it feel good when you were able to pull off certain tricks and it did feel that everything was rather difficult like with actual skateboarding I suppose although I'm not one to argue that realism makes a game good because I think that's a stupid thing but I think that if you add a bit of difficulty to something you do kind of have that weight to your actions but that's not necessarily the case in all instances it's kind of hard to explain so i'm not going to try to explain it anymore what i didn't like about this game so much was one that everything seemed really condensed and condensation is something that is happening it's just it's just a trend amongst games overall i may have to talk about this another time but the idea is with games condensing is the idea that challenges are getting shorter but more frequent so you basically have these parts where it's like do this trick on this rail and you're given a specific amount of time to do the trick on the rail or something like that as opposed to having a list of goals as to what like an early Tony Hawk game would do. So that whole do this in this very specific way thing is something that I'm not a particular fan of and just a, 
actually, I will just make a little side note when it comes to this. When people say things like newer games give you more freedom to do the things the way that you want them to, what they actually mean by that is that when it is condensed, like a game like this, what they mean is that the challenges are laid out such that you have a choice of all of these different challenges that you can do. But the challenges themselves are very, very strict and very specific. And the idea is you want to be able to eventually do them all anyway. So freedom in terms of your direct choices that the game presents you with, maybe. But freedom in terms of how you deal with things, not so much. But yeah, I did actually find this game really hard to control at times. Sometimes you would do like a little flick and because the little flick that you did wasn't exactly right on the right analog stick you might end up doing something that you didn't intend to do that was very common i found and that was something that's a big down thing for me number 293 is rock band 2 now i did go through a phase where i was really into these types of guitar rhythm style games but the thing is with rock band 2 is that I didn't play this game as much and I know the thing about Rock Band and the thing that they really tried to emphasise with it was that you could play different instruments and stuff and that's when I think it just got over the top. I mean to me the guitar was enough and I liked that but I didn't really bother with the other parts of it because I just couldn't be bothered. But I think that these games are generally as good as the songs are for the most part. One good point that Rock Band 2 does have and I suppose you could see this as a bad point depending on how you look at it but one thing that was quite nice is that it has dlc quite a lot of it as well so you could get uh, quite a wide variety of music for this game including a couple of rancid songs which i really like and my f- believe it was rock band 2 where you could get my favorite less than jake song younger lungs and yeah that's that's good because i i, I love that song but Rock Band was kind of marketed as a more advanced guitar hero, I think, but I didn't really see it as such. I just saw it as like an alternative, I suppose. Number 292 is Fantasy Star 2. This is a game that I did not play on the Mega Drive, or was it the Master System? I believe this one was the Mega Drive, wasn't it? But that doesn't matter because I played it on the Xbox 360 on one of the xbox live arcade games and my standards for rpgs was a lot higher at this point i feel that fantasy star 2 is an example of a really really primitive rpg and when i say primitive i don't mean random battles turn-based battles because people say that's primitive is just stupid right what i mean is things such as the lack of depth in range of abilities and just the way that everything was so unclear but saying that i still did have fun with this game there's just something satisfying about an rpg where you start the game off your level one and there's a world out there for you to go and conquer and you go out fighting bees or or slime or whatever it is at the beginning and getting a few experience points and getting to that level two so that you're a little bit better and you've got some more money so you can buy that little bit better sword there's something just really really nice about that i didn't really get too far i remember getting to a dungeon and it had all these teleporters and i just got lost i just did not know what was going on but i did enjoy the bit that i did play of it and i thought the battle theme was really nice but then rpg battle themes are usually really nice anyway so we've just had a few games whereby i've not had much to say about them and i think that's been a bit of a shame but this next game number 291 is echo the dolphin and this is a game that i did have on the mega drive and again like with space harrier 2 i have no idea how i got this or why i got it or anything i just remember that i did get it but this was a very strange game i remember being quite fascinated when i first played this about just being like this sea creature because obviously you're a dolphin but i remember at the beginning of the game you could press the a button i think it is to send out like these sonic waves so that you could communicate with things and then you talk to this whale and the, this whale would say something and i just remember sitting there with my dad and he would tell me about how these these different animals communicate and stuff and i remember i was quite i was quite fascinated in the this was a game that was very different in in that how most games were focused around you know most games are just like 
you know, you've got to get all the stuff or you've got to beat all the bad guys. But this game, it was kind of different. And I, I think that now when people say that, oh, this game is so good because there isn't any combat, I think that's kind of, I think that's just silly. But when I was at a young age, it was quite an interesting thing to see, I, I guess. Kind of like when I was playing Lionheart and my dad was telling me about, like, oh, something happened and he turned into a lion or whatever. And I remember being finding that a bit freaky. Kind of the same thing in this regard, apart from it was more to do with how I found it interesting and not necessarily freaky. But it was freaky at the start of the game when you jump into the sky. All of the sea life gets sucked up just out of nowhere and that kind of caught me off guard. As for the game itself, you're a dolphin, you've got to swim around, you can zoom forward to hit into enemies, you could also send out these sonic waves to speak to the other creatures as I've already said, but also you had to jump out of the water to get air and sometimes there were parts where you had to jump over a rock in order to go from one part of the level to the other. And I, I enjoyed that. I, I suppose you could say I enjoyed the graciousness of this game. I don't know if graciousness is a word. Gracefulness, that would be, that's the right word. There's me being the exact opposite of graceful by just making up words that sound clunky and all that, but whatever. And there you go. I remember one of the early levels you were in this really, really deep underwater part where you couldn't escape from the top, but you had like these little pockets of air and through all these different like tunnels and stuff and that was quite interesting. This is another one of those games where I rem I have strong memories of it but I feel like I just have to go and watch Let's Play or something just to, you know just to refresh my memory and see how accurate my memories are and stuff. Sometimes you see something that you haven't seen for a long time and even though it's very much how you remember it it's strange seeing it like I, I feel like that's the case here but I did get to a level I believe it was called the ocean where what happened there was it was just a large body of water and I don't know what you meant to do I just remember trying to get to the end and failing every time so I don't I don't know also what was quite strange is that many years later my friend Bridge who is a friend I, who I met in secondary school I used to go to his house quite a lot and you know we used to play games and stuff and I used to talk to him about games but Echo the Dolphin was a game that I used to talk to his mother about. That was quite different. Number 290 is Chrome. Not Google Chrome, just a game called Chrome that was out on the Amiga. And it's been quite a long time since we've seen one of these Amiga games, hasn't it? But this was a game that I got one Christmas. I believe this was the Christmas that came after the Christmas that I got my Amiga, which would have made it... Christmas of 1993 I think but yeah I got this game and it probably would have been one of those games where it came on a floppy disk with multiple other games and you had to press one of the F keys to activate this particular game what this game is is it's, it's a platformer it's rather atmospheric in the fact that it's got no music but you can just hear the wind very very simple graphically but you control this ball and you have to get to the end of the level you have a limited amount of time to get to the end of the level and there are things that hurt you sort of like hurt your time so it's kind of like your time and your health is the same thing that just keeps draining you also have these different panels that you can walk over that will make you bounce or will make you stick to the floor or will drain your health and you also have bullets that you have a limited amount of and so you have to get to the end of the level and you can play this game multiple players but that's just you know taking turns so you have the first player who's the chrome ball with the blue circle in it and player two is the chrome ball with the yellow circle in it and basically you've just got to be careful it's one of those games where it's not so much about making giant leaps or going fast or jumping all over the place it's more about taking your time and being careful, but not taking your time, you know, being aware of the time of going down, but, you know, just being careful, and I, I did like that. Although, I think probably at that time, it didn't, I didn't really notice it, because, you know, it was just a brand new game. Wow, new games, yeah, amazing. But I remember, specifically, I would complete the first level, this was on Christmas, I'd complete the first level, and then I would go to my parents, and I'd say, guess the password, <laughs> I'd say, guess the password for the level, and all the passwords in this game were five letter words, so the password for the first level was start, I don't know why the first level needs a password, and the password for the second level was truth, uh, T-R-U-T-H, but I thought it said tough, because I wasn't very good at 
reading. I, I just, I was never good at that stuff. And I did, like, an impression. I was like, guess what the password for level 2 is? And I sort of, like, flexed my muscles and stuff. And, and they said, muscles? And I went, no, it's tough. And they were saying, that doesn't, like, have five letters or something. And I said, T-R-U-T-H. It's like, oh, truth. That's a little fond memory of mine. I also remember eventually my friend Matthew and I would try to guess passwords. So I think one of the passwords that we managed to guess was paper. P P A P. I don't know why I'm spelling out these words for you. You you should not spell these. But we just guessed paper and it's like, yep, that's a level. Ah, fun times. Fun, fun memories. But less about fond memories. Let's talk about something a lot more recent. Number 200 and... 89 is Peggle 2! Yeah, yeah, that everyone remembers that, I hope. But yeah, Peggle 2, I got on the PS4, and as I'm recording this, I'm still in the middle of it. I have completed all of the main stages, and I have the bonus stages, and I have all the tasks to do. But the way that this game works is, well, I've explained Peggle before, I've explained the Peggle earlier where you've got the orange pegs and you've got the blue pegs and you have to destroy all the orange pegs and if you hit the green pegs you will activate the character's ability and you have different characters this time around you have the the boulder guy i don't remember his name where he throws a boulder which breaks through all the pegs you have the sasquatch who will make it so that when you hit a peg it will knock other pegs and there's a few sim similarities with some of them there's the electric guy who will zap other pegs when you hit them. There's this little skeleton girl who will make all of the blue pegs invisible so that when you shoot it will go through the blue pegs but still like hit them along the way. And you have the DLC characters who you have the, the skateboarding squirrel. But what I don't like about the squirrel this time around is that because everything's more themed on the characters, what I really am not liking is that when you do hit one of the green pegs as a this as the squirrel or I said, I said, no, 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 not squirrel. It's like a gopher type or a beaver. I forget which one. One, of, it's something like that. But what, what I find annoying is that it starts playing this annoying dubstep music because he's cool or something. And he skateboards. I, I don't know. But the other DLC character is like this fairy bird who will turn random blue pegs into purple pegs, which increases the amount of points that you get from hitting them, which is very useful. And I, I actually don't like it when DLC is actually useful, it kind of resembles microtransactions that way, but I got the ultimate edition of Peggle 2 when it was on my PS Plus sale, which is why I have them, but that is very useful for the different challenges, because the way that it works now is that all the levels will have three goals to them. You, if As long as you complete the level once, you can then replay the level, selecting any character that you want. But you have all of these different goals that you have to accomplish. So there might be one which is score so many points or clear out all the pegs or something like that. And the idea is you want to try to clear out all the goals on every level. But it's a bit more expansive, I suppose, than the original Peggle because of that. But also there's these bonus rounds where you've got a very specific challenge to do. So it might be destroy all these pegs in one ball or it might be you have three balls to destroy all these pegs but the pegs are moving around really quickly but you also have these extra stages once you've completed the main bunch of levels which is set like in space and the idea is that these are the extra hard levels that will take extra skill for you to complete and there is actually no default character so you actually have the responsibility of picking a good character for those levels as opposed to being guided by having levels set up for specific characters to be more beneficial than others but yeah i'm going to end this here so thank you for watching everyone i will see you in the next part where we will continue on with number 288 and i'll see you then so goodbye